Today, I'm going to show you how to make a Mexican pulled pork. It's not traditional, but it's cheap, easy, and delicious, and it has like five ingredients. Let's do it. First thing you're going to need is a big ass pot. I've got a six quart Dutch oven that's cast iron, but it wasn't big enough, but it worked. You're going to preheat that to medium to medium high, depending on your stove, and put some olive oil in there. About two tablespoons. That's about how much I used. Next, we're going to wait for that to heat up till it's smoking, and then we're going to throw in two onions that I've cut in half and peeled. We're gonna get some brown on the face of those onions, some delicious brown, some caramelization. Here I've got some dried red chilies. You can use jalapenos, you can use fresh red chilies, you can use fresh jalapenos. You can use chipotle peppers. You can use whatever you want, whatever you have. I'm gonna chop those in half to get the seeds out and I'm gonna throw those in with my onions. They'll rehydrate a little bit in that oil and that onion juice and those will add a ton of flavor, a little bit of heat and it'll be good. You can see we're getting some color here, so I'm gonna flip these start getting some color on the other side. If you look at the bottom of the pan, you can see all that beautiful brown fond. We're gonna deglaze that later and that's gonna make our glaze super, super flavorful. Now I've got two pinches of salt, big pinches. We're gonna have a lot of liquid. I probably could have salted this more, but it tasted fine, so I don't really care. We're gonna put some cumin in. Again, a couple big pinches. Traditional Mexican spice goes in everything. And now, we put in a shit ton of black pepper. Tons. Like, a lot. And as you can hear, I ran out. I refilled. Now it's time to work on your biceps. I said a lot of black pepper. We're not done yet. We're not, we're not even close. Still not done yet. Still going. Almost done? Yeah. Now I have an orange. Two oranges, actually. We're going to cut those in half. You could probably get away with limes or lemons, but nah. Just use oranges. Juice those. That'll deglaze the pan. You can see that font come up immediately. That's all done. Just throw the oranges in there. We don't have to zest them. We're cooking this so long, it'll cook all the flavor out of the zest and the peel anyway. So once that's done, we're going to move on to our pork shoulder. Now this thing is huge, it's like seven and a half pounds, and it was like nine dollars, super cheap. But it's super fatty, bone in, you want bone in, the bone gives a lot of flavor. We're going to cut this into two pieces, you can see the bone's kind of T-shaped. We're going to go right across the top and get a nice flat edge so we can set that other piece down. That piece is easy, you just want to chunk it up. What we're doing is chunking all of this so it's the same size. Now this, you're just going to want to start cutting meat off, big chunks of meat. The fat's layered in, so we're going to trim it, but you could spend all day trimming fat off this thing. We're going to cook the thin stuff off, and it'll cook off in the broth. But this thick stuff, you're going to want to either get that out, or if it's just little thin layers of meat in between it, I just throw it away. I mean, it's it's like a dollar ten a pound. I, I don't really care. But stuff like this, you can see it's a big chunk on top of a fairly substantial size slice of meat. I'll just cut that off, throw it away. There's not really a use for that, in my opinion. If I want lard, I'll just buy lard. A nice sharp knife helps with this. Now, the really only hard part about this is once you get to the bone, once you, once you get to the bone, I'm almost to the bone. Okay, now we're at the bone. The easiest way I found out to get these little medallions of meat out is to take a sharp paring knife and just kind of fillet around the inside of the bone. This is hard. You don't cut yourself, cut away from yourself. You're just going to want to peel that down. It doesn't matter if you really butcher it. We're going to be cooking the bone anyway, so any meat that's left on there will get cooked off. But you're just going to want to cut that off until you can separate it. And then once you get that little hunk of meat off, chop it in half. And you can see the size of the chunks here. All about the same size. The bone's still there. We're keeping that. Now, at this point, this is when I'm like, oh, I needed a bigger pot. Oh, well, maybe I can stuff this all in here. So I start packing the meat in. Just packing the meat in. Had to flip it because there was way too much. It's already to the top of the Dutch oven. And then I throw the bone on there. At this point, my lid won't fit. So I'm kind of screwed. Start filling that up with water. You want to get it as close to covered as you can. Mine ended up taking about three and a half to four cups of water. I didn't really measure. But once you get all that in there, you're going to want to bring it up to a boil. And then drop it down to a simmer. About like this. 
This is after about 45 minutes to an hour of cooking. You can see all the vegetables and the fruits cooking down. We're starting to get a nice broth going. Our meat is still fairly tough. You can see how it's not really jiggling at all. I let that go another 45 minutes. We're at about an hour and a half now. You can see it's more jiggly. That's the connective tissue breaking down. At this point, I felt we left it like we left lost enough liquid to throw the lid on. And after about another an hour and a half, three hours total, we have this. You can see how jiggly it is. The jiggliness is a good indicator of if it's done. Because when all that connective tissue is broken down, nothing's going to be holding this together. The fat's mostly rendered off, and this meat can't even support its own weight. It's super tender, super juicy, and delicious, but it looks terrible. It's like gray, has no color. We can make it better. You can see it just can't support its own weight. If you squeeze it with a pair of tongs, it should break apart easy. Like that. Like that. Now, since this is gray, how do we fix that? We broil it. So we're pulling all this off, all the big chunks of meat out of the pot. We're putting them onto a wire cooling rack over a sheet pan. The cooling rack's important if you don't have one. Go get one. So we're going to pull all that out. Try to resist eating it now. It still tastes pretty good. Really good. So we're going to pull our oranges out. Squeeze whatever's in them out. That's just more flavor. And we're going to pull our onions out. The onions have pretty much given up all their flavor to the broth. And they're in the way. So this light stuff on top, the light yellow, that's fat. This dark stuff at the bottom is pork stock and little chunks of pepper and uh, pork that cooked down and was too small to get out and that's delicious we're going to bring that up to a boil reduce it for about 15 minutes that just means boil it for like 15 minutes and we're going to cool it down cooling it down is important it makes it thicker now you see how it's almost sugary barbecue sauce looking that's amazing turn your broiler on mine's 525 yours is probably 500 doesn't matter we have our pork it looks different because i slept for like four hours because i was tired we're going to glaze that just spoon that glaze all over nice and slow yeah super slow too delicious we're gonna throw that in middle rack you don't want it on the top rack it'll cook too fast and brown this takes about seven minutes after about two minutes you can see we're already getting some nice brown tops on the pork nice crispy bits and after about seven minutes that's what we have it's got a nice char on the top. The char is a nice flavor. It's almost like it was grilled, but it's not. Oh my. Let's just have a moment of silence. Okay. We're going to flip all that over. We're still not done. Flip it all over. Oh. Oh. That's beautiful. I don't even know what to say. Okay, we're going to start glazing all the other side. Make sure you don't miss any... Oh. Okay, so put that back in the oven. This doesn't take as long as the first side. About three to five minutes. And once it's done, you have the most incredibly flavorful roasted pork ever. You can make it into tacos. Once you pull it apart, it pulls apart super easy. Super juicy. I made mine into tacos with avocado, a little bit of red pepper hummus, some parsley, and some cheese. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.